I know I'll be meeting some of you over the next few weeks. Uh, I have already met some in which we've had evidence, and I'll talk about that in a minute. I do have to dash off, I'm afraid, uh, after my talk, as politicians rudely do, I think. But in this case, it's because it's a Friday, and I have some trouble in two places in Norwich at the local hospital where they're trying to sack 450 people and also up the prison where they've just moved a vote of no confidence in the governor. So I think you can understand I'd better get in there and sort those problems out too, but that's the nature of the job. That's an excuse, but uh, it doesn't uh, you know, um, mean that I'm not uh, interested in the subject at all and what the speakers uh, I've got to say later on. I'll, I'll get their packs and we'll see the DVD of course. Um, can I say that um, I've been at three or four meetings in this area to hear different groups who are involved in campaigning uh, and to hear what their views are. We've also, uh, you know, talked to some of your speakers and I'll say something about that later. We started off, I guess, thinking uh, in our inquiry, which I don't think is informal actually now, it's beginning very formal because we had minister, people from the Department of Health there from uh, the National Institute of Clinical Excellence this week, and they sat through it all and listened and told us what they were doing, and after it informally said to us how much they had learned. So it makes you kind of scared uh, how they get their information without having their own form of inquiry. So I think we're having a little effect there to begin with. Uh, we will have the minister in, whoever it is, this week. As you know, ministers seem to change daily or weekly or monthly. Uh, and it, it was going to be Jane Kennedy, but she's um, moved on now. And uh, we will get the minister in. It may be uh, Carolyn Flint or somebody like that who would come in to talk and ask them what their attitude is, and she will have her officials with her. So in that sense, it's going to be a formal inquiry. There's going to be a report. I am absolutely determined to get that report out before we break up at the end of July. We have a debate, and we hit the media airwaves with it after we've got consultation from groups like your group here. The chief medical officer, as you've, as you've seen yourself, um, came out three years ago with um, the um, report into CFS ME, and it was an important step to this extent that it recognised the seriousness of the condition, and I think it's time, you know, uh, to evaluate how far we've come in understanding this condition since then. The reason I set the group up was very much on an individual basis that various constituents had come to see me and they brought uh, uh, Professor Hooper to see me as well, and I've had various other groups come to see me in my constituency office in Norwich to uh, put their particular point of view. And whether I've got political antenna or whatever, uh, it was something I suddenly picked up and said, really, you know, this is, uh, you know, flailing around a bit. We need to get sorted and to raise the profile of it even more than there is at the minute, and to try and settle some of the arguments, if that is possible. I might add that when it first was raised in Parliament, I think in 1997 and 1998, I found out I had spoken in the debate. I'd forgotten all about that uh, when I knew just a little, having talked to various medical uh, colleagues about it, and uh, have not played a major part at all in the all-party group which was set up following that meeting. And maybe that's just as well from what I hear about some of the, the antics that have gone on uh, there. So I wasn't going to do it through that organization. I thought I would do it in a much more independent way where there weren't going to be so many accusations of uh, bias and uh, non-independence and so on. It is a major uh, problem, some quarter of a million people, and it does cost the Exchequer uh, billions of pounds of money. So it's quite serious. Yesterday I was at a New Statesman um, Health Service in the Future meeting. They have these supplements that they add to the New Statesman magazine, and all the great and the good were there. Colin Blakeman was there from the MRC, Professor Carol Black from the Royal College of Physicians, and so on and so on. It was just uh, a stunning um, uh, array of people there uh, who were talking about it. And it was quite interesting. ME never got mentioned once. Uh, the only diseases that, as usual that got mentioned were cancer, heart disease, and just a little bit of mental health uh, crept in there because there was a professor there who's uh, been quite concerned about doing work in this country on it. 
I did mention it, in fact, that uh, it was the usual blank stares. You know, it is not seen as a major activity, and it really ought to be, not just because of the number of people, but it is something that you can't just slide away and forget and say that it's not there, that it doesn't exist. All the evidence says that it does exist, and now that battle has actually been won. What I said was, when I set this group up, uh, was that I wanted to stimulate public debate and interest in MECFS and act as a catalyst for increased funding into the research of ME, which I hope will one day lead to a cure for those suffering from the illness across the UK and around the world. Well, that may be pious stuff, but that's my intention. I have been involved in many projects in Parliament and managed to extricate money for different types of research into uh, uh, cancer, for example, much easier than others, as I've indicated, and also things like vitamin D and so on, and uh, I, we take up causes like that, so that, you know, where there is prejudice, we try to eradicate it with good, sound sense and science and information and make sure that people who want to do that research get the backing and support that they actually need. We have terms of reference for our inquiry, looking at causes, programme of research on all aspects of the condition, uh, adequate investment for the research, increased public understanding of the research into MECFS, identifying the research and funding requirements in establishing the causes and so on. So that was the broad remit where we had to try and sit. Now, there are many other things we could have done as well. I appreciate that. But sometimes in inquiry, sometimes in life, you have to be quite specific and know that you've got some support in terms of that area of activity. And I think we do have. The, the setting up for the membership of the committee gave me a certain amount of trouble because, again, I had to ensure that it covered a range of people from both houses of parliament, the Lords and the Commons, and that, uh, you know, that it satisfied to some extent, it will never satisfy everybody, to some extent the broad range of support and opinion that there is about it. You know I'm chairing it. Uh, there's Dr. Richard Taylor, who was a consultant, an independent MP who's on there, so his independence was important. And he's, his view to me was, uh, you're a very, very brave man to take this on. You know, there's been a long, long struggle, and I hope you live long enough to see something come out of it. So I've got this far anyway, and I'm, I'm quite proud, and I'll tell you what we've done. Uh, I have Anne Cryer, who's the secretary. I have Des Turner, who's not managed to turn up yet because of other activities, who chairs the all-party uh, group on it. It seemed to me that that was courteous, although some people tried to prevent that happening for various reasons. I thought, you know, courtesy doesn't cost you anything, and it's worth doing it to maintain that kind of uh, authenticity, I think, uh, for the parliamentary role of the committee. There's a chap, David Taylor, who's very much an independent uh, MP, uh, a Labour MP who uh, uh, had an early day motion and got a lot of signatures together and so on. He comes from Leicestershire, another part of the country and so on, and that's important. I have Lord Turnberg, who is a, a classic medic, who was a Royal College uh, uh, a president for some time of the Royal College of Physicians, who may be a little sceptical about the condition, and we all know what that means in terms of some GPs and so on. And there's some members of parliament I wouldn't have on there because their prejudice is just outstandingly bad uh, in terms of what they think about the condition and have told me so, what a waste of time and so on. So they're not getting a place on the committee because they're not going to listen to the evidence and take it seriously. Baroness Cumberledge, who's a Conservative, who's in the House of Lords. Uh, there's the Countess of Mar, of course, who some of you will know, who has been a, a, an arch campaigner, really, on the uh, issues of pesticides and uh, organophosphates, particularly, and so on. Knows something about the field, has studied it, knows the problems with science in those areas and how people are picked on and prejudiced against and so on. And then, of course, there's Michael Meacher, who is interested in all things, uh, you know, environmental, and is quite a champion in, in terms of sitting on a committee and asking the right kind of questions. 
We've started to uh, work to understanding the complications that there are in the field. And I have to say, one of the complications has been the vicious emails I've been getting from people. But then I'm a broad back politician and can handle all that. I've been called worse things in my time. Even before I'd started the committee, I was getting slagged off as being in the pharmaceutical industry. Now, I know the pharmaceutical industry, uh, but I'm, uh, I can assure you uh, my prejudice against them is even more than my prejudice against Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> or Ipswich, I might add, coming from Norwich. <laughs> uh, I think then that we have all the voices as much as we can in, in, in an independent inquiry, as much as any inquiry can be independent. We all, of course, we don't start with a clean sheet. We have some prejudice about the difficulties, as I told you, Richard Taylor says, oh gosh, I wouldn't take it on. It's pretty difficult stuff, that, to get an answer. Well, perhaps. I like difficult challenges, and we shouldn't run away from it. And if Parliament's a place that can make things better, uh, so, so it should be. So the vitriolic attacks have kind of calmed down at the minute, uh, but I, I love them after we have an inquiry and certain people are there as the emails come in harder and harder, uh, you know, criticising various people. I might say I'm not going to have any of that, really, to be quite honest. You know, we're, we're trying very hard to get independent views, to give everybody a chance to, um, you know, to argue with each other. And there are little arguments going on, but there will be some big arguments, I'm sure, at our next session, because deliberately we thought we'll have them in the same room and uh, with a good bit of tough chairmanship, uh, I'll ensure that uh, it doesn't get physical, that, uh, you know, and they don't interrupt each other and behave in a courteous way. But that's fine. I come from a scientific background, and it's not new to me in science. I've never met two scientists who ever agree about the interpretation of each other's data, and that's how things move on, that we encourage that kind of debate and so on. The, the, the group has had a lot of written evidence coming in from sufferers and charities and research groups, other organisations, individuals, um, and uh, we're going to have some like four or five oral hearings, uh, and it will be the basis of uh, this final uh, report, and if we don't get it out before the summer, it will certainly be written over the summer and come out early in the autumn. We've had a fantastic response for, uh, to requests for written evidence over the last few months. It's been made up of letters, uh, letters from sufferers, individuals who are very grateful that at last Parliament seems to be sitting up and taking a listen. So I really do feel the burden on the back of trying to support and help these people, the carers who explain the situation they find themselves in due to the, debili the, the debilitating nature of uh, ME. We want to hear uh, firsthand, and we did that at the first session from sufferers, uh, and uh, there was a good broad spectrum of organisations there. Now, I'm used to doing that. I mean, I could have had 400 people all talking for 10 minutes each and been there. So I tried to be quite uh, even-handed and give everybody. And I must say, the people who gave the evidence kept very, very much within their 10 minutes and managed to get their arguments over. And I can tell you, some of the people on the committee, Baroness Cumberland, said, I didn't know it was as serious that. She had been a Conservative health minister and is a health spokesman for the Conservative Party in the House of Lords. So you're starting to have an effect by the nature of this inquiry. People are started from the basis that they know it's for real, that we're not just messing about here, that this is just as serious as cancer or any other uh, problems. So that uh, base was the basis for our investigation, and now we're moving into the experts, and we had uh, two of the speakers here this week, and we'll have Malcolm Hooper uh, later on as well. I'm not going to put out a report that doesn't you know, have some kind of support in terms of having had a broad base of information being put into it. If anybody writes to me and say one thing that you're missing, and we're going to have Jonathan Kerr too later on, if you're missing, if they say to me you're missing something in this, fine, I'm, I'm up for it, and I'm prepared to meet people individually with several members of the committee to take that on, and indeed I have done that since. I invite everybody after the committee to feel if they haven't had a chance for their full say, please get in touch and we'll find another way to make sure that you do. We have DVDs, my office is stuffed full of them at the minute with uh, all sorts of things, and I can assure you the committee is taking it very seriously and reading all the work. But please be patient, because there is a huge stack of evidence from different people, and it's, it is a lot of work, but it's being done. 
So we've done two sessions now. We've had the sufferers and we had the experts in this week on the 10th of May. And I think uh, it's been quite mind-opening for lots of people uh, on that committee. And that, would be, that, that just sounds kind of simple. Uh, the panel have, I think, come in with a little suspicion, but that has been eradicated because of the evidence that's come in front of them. I mentioned Julia Cumberledge, but I could mention what other people have said too. They know that it is a serious situation, that it's devastating on relationships, carers, and the self-confidence of so many individuals. That goes without saying, that is proven. You will know that there's a sector of people who say, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's not for real, this. And I've mentioned some GPs that I know, and I'm sure there are many more. Uh, I think uh, once we've got our report, there are many ways we can act to get that report into government. Having the minister in and hearing his or her view at the time will be very important to see what they think about it. And one of the questions will be, how should we progress with the Department of Health? And we've already had NICE in, who are indicating that they're going to have some guidelines coming out pretty shortly. And I think uh, the Canadian evidence that we heard this week, I think will be very important, and I hope that Bruce felt that, that it was being taken rather seriously by, by, uh, by NICE. Uh, I think there are several themes that we haven't quite got to grip with yet that need to be resolved. Uh, we need to talk a bit more about the lack of provision and support uh, in terms of social security, benefits, health care, it's kind of worrying that there's a huge gap there that needs to be addressed. We're going to have to move a little and uh, extend our remit into that field. Definitions are a real issue too, the differences between different organisations. The fact that there's no diagnostic test raises the question, why not? Why haven't we found one? If we can start finding one for prostate cancer, is it not possible to put enough effort in here to extend the, the, the science and the knowledge into that field? Uh, what about getting consensus? How, how much consensus can we get together? We can say, do you agree with somebody or don't you agree? We need to know the extent of the differences. We need to know the extent of the agreements, trying to be positive about it as well as having uh, the, the differences. Do we need a consensus would be another question. Who cares? You can just let it drift around all over the place and it goes on as before. Personally, I think a consensus would be helpful if we can find out what we do know, what we don't know, and what we should do about it to find out. Uh, we can talk about the NICE guidelines. We'll have them, I'm sure, to start looking into. They're going to give us the pre uh, preamble. We'll look at them and we'll show them around to people before they put out something that we're all going to oppose. I don't want another Mental Health Act, which in this country some of us fought and fought and fought uh, to the extent that the government's you know, withdrawn it now uh, because we didn't agree with things and we had lobby groups supporting us and so on. We don't want to get into that situation. We want to try and you know, set it up so that we can get something that's positive and at least is a step forward. I'm not saying we're going to provide the whole answer. What I'm telling you, we're going to nudge it forward and make sure that it doesn't go back that it goes forward and that uh, we get some improvements. I've said, I think, I think I can say here, that we will get more money into research, and it won't be research in one area, the prejudices that many people think happen now in terms of what research is funded. No way are we going to agree with that. We, we have learned enough already to know that, uh, you know, it's, uh, there is an unfairness in how it happens, and I've told Colin Blakemore that at the MRC. And I think I saw somewhere in one of the notes that Colin doesn't even know how much is spent on AME, and I think that is absolutely disgraceful. I also find, too, that they don't often know what's spent on prevention, preventative medicine in this country. But uh, we have to find out for them and tell them it's something like 0.3% of the budget. Well, that's not on. That's going to be one of the big things, I think, prevention and trying to find ways of preventing not just ME and CFS, but all sorts of illnesses as well. I think it's going to be a big, a big push in this country. And the second big push is the influence of patient groups and the individuals in influencing government. I think government's beginning to sit up and, and the departments of government are learning that it's not, they don't have the ultimate knowledge in all these fields, that people who are going through the condition like uh, we saw ourselves know much more about what it's like, what needs to be done than civil servants sitting in Whitehall departments. 
The treatment, of course, is going to be another area where there's going to be a match. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the moment Simon Wesley comes through the door. I'm sure uh, he'll be very popular. He'll be as popular as Patricia Hewitt at an RCN conference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but seriously, I mean, I know uh, Simon Wesley. I met him at a, a meeting recently, and uh, I've told them, you know, that people disagree with him, and uh, we will give him some heavy questioning about how you know, he's made his decisions and so on. Not in an unfriendly way, but certainly in a way where perhaps he hasn't been stretched before. So there it is. Uh, I wish I had the inquiry uh, results in front of me now, so you could say, hang on a minute, that's nonsense or whatever. Uh, maybe you'll have to invite me back again. I'd be very pleased to do that, to talk about the report, to talk about the areas where we can make a conclusion and areas where we need to still. I don't think we'll have all the answers, but let's hope we have enough answers to move it forward. Thank you. I'm not pretending this is going to be like solving bird flu or something, you know, like yeah. produce a vaccine and it'll be all right. I know it's much more complicated than that. But I think the research is uh, now there and we need to start giving people the resources and facilities. Somebody asked me last night, a friend of mine, uh, Richard, who is working with you here, of course, who helps run it, uh, how do I get money for research and could I get a lab up in Norwich and so on? You know, that's not a daft question. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds like it's wanting the earth, but, you know, if you can get, uh, you know, support and there's research and you can think of good projects, there is no reason why it couldn't happen anywhere. And we've got to make the local hospitals, laboratories and so on sit up and take notice and um, make the facility available. It is not all about cancer and heart disease, just to get good gradings for your university or institute or so on. It's about tackling health, where many of our people can benefit from good research.